Hi, I'm Drew Larson, the founding co-owner of Leaders Beverage. Today I'm at the Open Bottle in Tinley Park. There's a link right there to that website. They're being kind enough to let me do this video today where we're going to talk about a step-by-step -step process of cleaning a draft beer line system. Now there's a lot of videos out there that shows you the basic steps, the overall. Uh, and there's a lot of great resources out there. What we're going to focus today is a more detailed step-by-step -step how to clean a draft system. Now this system today is going to be a long draw, which means there's beer trunk and there's glycol, and we're going to be using a pump to circulate. Now, I'm going to refer today to the draft beer quality manual that is put out by the Brewers Association, and it's a completely free resource. There's a link right now on the screen to it if you'd like to open that up and follow along in that. It's an absolutely critical resource if you want to learn about draft uh, technology. Now, this video is going to be important for you if you're trying to learn how to clean a system, but it's also critical if you own, operate, or manage any draft beer system because this will help you see what is correct so that you can watch over whatever company is doing your draft beer system and know that they're doing uh, a proper cleaning. Now, what I'm going to show you today is a, uh, a circulation cleaning. In static cleaning, you simply fill the system with a caustic cleaner, you let it sit for 20 minutes, and then you flush it out. As opposed to that, there's circulation cleaning. And in circulation, you're literally circulating fluid and cleaning uh, through the system. Circulation cleaning is immensely more effective than static cleaning. So in all cases where it's at all possible, that's the type of cleaning I'm going to recommend. Now, when you There's going to be four items that we look at. Time, temperature, flow rate, and caustic strength or percentage. Those are the four big things that we're going to be looking at to balance in order to clean properly. So I'll talk about those as we go through today. And I might sound a little bit redundant in places, but those are things that I really want to point out. So let's go ahead and get this video started. And please, if there's any point that I make during this video that you're unsure of, go ahead and leave a message below and we will gladly get back to you very promptly. Thanks to all of our subscribers. Uh, we really appreciate your support. It helps us continue to do little projects like this. Where I deviate from the draft beer quality manual, I'll let you know because there is frankly a difference between best practices and practical practices. So where I deviate for something that's a little bit more practical and, and actual cleaning, I'll let you know and I'll let you know why we do those things. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to need to do is put on protective gloves and protective eyewear because we're using dangerous chemicals and we always want to think safety first. What we're going to do next is we're going to turn off the glycol power pack. Now then, the reason we're turning off the glycol power pack is so that we don't have freezing cold coolant going through the lines next to the beer lines. Because we're going to be filling the beer lines with a caustic cleaner and that cleaner works at its best between 80 and 110 degrees. So we have the glycol fighting against that, it reduces the efficiency of the cleaner. Now if you have a short draw system like a kegerator or an air cooled system, then that obviously doesn't apply. Now let's move on to the next step. Okay, as you might guess, the next step is inside the cooler where we're going to disengage all the couplers. So in disengaging the couplers, as you might know, all you need to do is pull the handles and disengage. As you'll see here, you're just disengaging all of the kegs. Now, this should be enough to keep the gas from flowing into the coupler and pushing beer out of the system. If you have particularly old couplers, the seals might be a little bit loose on them, which will allow the gas to push beer out. You don't want that. So if that happens, and you'll see this step where that might happen, you can turn the gas off, but of course I would recommend changing the coupler. All right, so all of the couplers are disengaged, so the beer is no longer flowing. What we want to do now is make a list of the order of all the beers, and it's easy to do when you're here in front of all the standards or the handles, uh, also called tap markers, because they mark which beer. 
And you'll write this list down so that after we take off all the markers, when we put them back and we go back inside the cooler, we make sure we connect things in the right order. So we're going to go ahead and take off all the tap markers and we're going to lay them out. And usually if you lay them out in order, they go on a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and do all that. The next step is going to be to flush out what little beer may remain in the lines under what pressure may be there. And so here you see one of those situations where I say gas is still flowing into the line. And so we'll check that gasket. But for now, we know that we can go and shut the gas off on that. Now, with the gas shut off and all of the faucets have been bled uh, or drained out, we're going to go ahead and remove the faucets. Now, when we remove the faucets, we're going to take them apart and put them into the bucket. And we're taking them apart because every single time we clean, we want to take the faucets apart, soak them in caustic, and then clean them, put them back together and back on. Now, what we're doing today is a caustic cleaning. A caustic cleaning happens every two weeks and is a standard cleaning. That's what we're going to go through today. Then once a quarter, you're going to do an acid cleaning. And when you do the acid, the acid is done in conjunction with the caustic. Now caustic is a base, so a high number pH. That takes care of and kills bacterial growth. The acid cleaning uh, is low pH, uh, below seven, and that takes care of beer stone. So we're going to go ahead and take off all these faucets and disassemble them. Now, if you'd like to see a video talking just about the faucet, how to take it apart and take care of it, there's a link right here. So now that the faucets are off, taken apart and soaking in caustic, we're going to go ahead and put the jumpers onto the faucets. Now, this is a faucet jumper, and it basically connects just like a faucet would, but it connects into the shank. Now by doing this, it allows the cleaner to circulate using a pump. So we're gonna go ahead and connect all these. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pay attention to the flow, the direction of flow. So the last time we cleaned, we went from right to left. This time we're gonna go left to right. And by changing the direction of flow each time, we're able to create a counter flow on each line at least once a month because we're doing this cleaning every two weeks. Now, the more lines that you connect together, the slower your flow rate's gonna be with the pump. Now, good practical, or I should say good best practice is to gain a flow rate of about two gallons per minute. Now, when you have a direct draw system with maybe only two, three, or four lines, or perhaps an eight line system, where you can do two pumps at once and clean the entire system, that's great. But when you're cleaning, say, 60, 70, 80 lines, it may not be, and they're all 70, 80 feet long, it may not be practical from a time standpoint to only clean two or three of those lines at a time to gain that two gallons per minute. So in that case, when we use a pump, and we'll do all eight of these today, you'll see we're gonna be closer to about one or 1 1.2 gallons per minute. Now, what I do to compensate for that is flush for a longer period of time. So instead of the standard 15 minute circulation, because we have a bit of a slower flow rate, we're gonna go to a full 20 minutes on the circulation. Now in static cleaning, uh, where you would just fill the line up, none of this would have happened, you just fill the line up and you let the caustic sit, you have to sit for at least 20 minutes. On circulation, by the book, it's 15 minutes. We're going to actually increase that to 20 minutes just to get it. Now then, when you're making these connections, there is a seal, and you can see that black rubber seal in there. If that's missing, you can absolutely not make a connection. So what you want to do is you'll spin the shank coupling nut until it catches the threads. Then you can pull back a little bit to make sure you're caught, and then you'll spin it until the pattern catches. And when you push forward, you should be able to feel a little bit of that rubber. If it feels like metal, or you don't feel a little bit of a, a give, then it's not connected right, and it won't create a seal. And all you need is hand tight on these. Now the last one we're gonna put on is a long out tube. And you'll see that as we go. And the out tube is for the flush.
and I feel the rubber connection and we're good and that and we've got that connected and this is going to run to the sink now the reason we made these connections here before making the connections in the cooler is because when we connect the couplers together it creates a bit of a pressure difference between the open lines up here and the closed lines in the cooler and that sometimes can make beer come shooting out of these shanks so I like to connect everything out here and now we're going to go into the cooler to connect inside now again remember the number of loops that we make here is going to go a lot to the amount of pressure that's required to clean and the flow rate so the less you do the better now the draft beer quality manual recommends that you never clean more than four lines at a time I'm willing to say that from a practical standpoint when you have a lot of lines sometimes you need to do a little bit more in that case I remind you we want to flush for a little bit longer however if you have the time and you're doing your cleaning and you can do four lines at a time it's absolutely the best way to go now then what we're going to do is we're going to connect all the lines in here in the cooler and what we're going to use is this dual flush coupler and what this does is it allows the two couplers to come together and then this spike allows the check ball to stay up and the beer to flow now what do i mean by the check ball so now is a good time too you can always check the connections so inside each beer line you should have a seal inside that hex nut and inside the coupler there's a hex nut or i'm sorry a check ball and check valve now if you'd like to see more about the actual coupler and its breakdown and all the pieces you can see that here all right so we've checked that we have all of our seals and that you have your check valve inside of the gas line again at that same link where you can see that so you always want to use a bucket now there's a bucket here and the reason you're going to use the bucket is because as you put this dual flush coupler on it's going to push that check ball up and allow the beer to flow out and in order to avoid making a mess in the cooler that grows bacteria you just put it in a bucket and catch all that now you won't always have a perfect uh, d or s style sand key coupler in that case what you can do is take that same hex nut off i just showed you at the top of the coupler and you use a duplex coupler just like this that would be with this line and this line and those will come together and then you just clean the coupler individually so let's go ahead and make all of our connections now remember this just goes in order line one goes to line two line three goes to line four and so on now that as you can see we're doing a circulation cleaning which means using a pump to circulate the fluids the first thing you want to do when you use a, a pump after plugging it in is you're going to prime the pump, uh, prime the pump, because you certainly don't want to push air through this. So we prime the pump with water flowing, and then we make the connections. So let's take a look at what that looks like in the sink. You see that you have the intake, and that just goes into a bucket of water. And the best thing to do is have flowing water, and that creates a kind of reservoir. Now the temperature of the water you don't want to be ice cold and you don't want it to be super hot you're looking for kind of a lukewarm one thing to remember is that the polyvinyls that are in your system like the jumpers get malleable with temperature so if it's too warm they start to increase and expand between 80 and 100 degrees is where we'll want the chemical now what we're going to do is we're going to take the line that actually goes into the faucets and we're going to prime the pump and you'll see that happen we're going to go ahead turn the pump on and you can hear it going and there the, the water is flowing and you don't feel any bubbles coming through the, the pump is primed we can go ahead and make all our connections now so we're going to go ahead and take that line and we're going to make the connection remember as you're doing this as soon as the threads catch you'll pull back a little bit and as it gets closer then you'll push forward feel for that that rubber squishiness 
and then hand tight should be just good enough. Now then I'm going to go ahead and turn on the pump and what you'll see is that the water is going to start flowing through and you should see that flow. Now as you see that flow and you're going to go real slow with the pump, seeing that flow tells you that everything is connected properly. Now if you're using one of the larger pumps that has a pressure gauge, you really never want to go past about 40 pounds of pressure. So if that cuts down on the number of lines that you can clean at once, that's fine, but never go past that 35 to 40 pounds. Although lines are rated to about 55 pounds, myself and several colleagues have found that when you go past 40 pounds, you'll often break some of these seals located inside the cooler or even worse, potentially inside of a, a line or inside of a wall. So the best practice here is to keep the, the pump on uh, low and then monitor that way. Again, too, you don't want that water to be too warm because imagine as this warms up, it gets pliable and then high pressure plus warm can push these seals off. You really don't want that to happen when you're cleaning and you have caustic in the line. So you want to keep that pressure down and monitor the flow rate. And you can see as it pushes out. So we're going to do this water flush until we're comfortable that all of the beer is out of the line. Now the reason we're doing this with water and not with cleaning agent is because if we use the cleaning agent to push this, then the pH of the beer would counteract the pH of the cleaner and it would render it less useful. So we're gonna push all this out until it's just water. Now let's take a look at the outline and see how our flow looks. So here you see, this is where the beer is coming out and we can check the flow rate right here. One way. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and let this continue to flush until it's just water. And in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and mix our caustic cleaning agent. Now, when we mix our caustic cleaning agent, each brand has its own uh, instructions and you'll wanna look at those. I use the Micromatic, it's just what I use. There's lots of them out there. Now you'll notice I just reached over to the floor to pick this up. You always, and I should put my safety glasses on, you always keep your cleaners on the floor. Never put them up on a counter because they can accidentally get pushed off. Whether it's a sealed bottle that's never been opened or not, keep them on the floor just as good positive habit transfer and that will be one less thing to worry about. Remember, safety's always got to come first. Now, when we mix the caustic, we want a 2% solution for newer lines, lines that are very well taken care of. We'll want a 3% solution if they're older lines or they're lines in, in need of more care. Now in order to do that, each, each manufacturer will give you how to mix for a percentage. So one thing to remember is when you're making your solution that the system now has a lot of water in it. There's water in the beer trunk that runs through the walls. There's beer in the jumpers and there's beer inside the jumpers that are in the cooler. So by using the draft beer quality manual, you can see how much liquid is in your beer lines. For example, this system was built with quarter inch beer line and there's 20 feet of it. So I know I have eight beer lines times 20 feet times quarter inch volume, which I believe is 0.33 ounces per foot. Now if you use 3 eighths inch uh, beer line, that for example would be 3 quarters of an ounce per foot. Also don't forget the volume that are in your beer jumpers. So if you have 8 foot jumpers that are 3 eighths interior diameter, that would be the number of beer lines times that 8 feet each times 3 quarters of an ounce. Now you add that up. One gallon is 128 ounces. You divide that and you'll know how many gallons you have. Now, you're also going to have a gallon or two of water in the bucket where you create the mixture. So you want to add all of that up to determine what your final mix is going to be so that once everything is circulating, you have your 2 or 3% caustic solution. If you have any questions about this or you're not sure uh, or want further explanation, just leave a comment below and we will get back to you very quickly. Now then we're going to go ahead and mix that caustic up. You'll see that I'm working at the floor, not up on a counter. Now I know that this system has one and a half gallons of beer in it, or right now water. 
and the bucket right here has a gallon and a half. So that means there's a total of two and a half gallons of volume. I know that the cleaner that I use needs one capful per ounce per gallon. So that means I'm going to need five capfuls. Now I'm gonna add caustic to the water and never water to the caustic. And the reason you do that is because you don't want it to splash. So you can see I'm working with the caustic at the floor and I'm simply gonna fill my cap and it's gonna need five capfuls. Again, that's using this cleaner. I use Micromatic, I like it. It's always worked well for me. There's a lot of other cleaners out there on the market. That's four and five. All right, so we're all set here. We can go ahead and turn on our pump. All right, now, during the water flush, I also went into the cooler to ensure that there were no leaks. The best time to find a leak in your system is when you're running water through it, not with caustic. So I know there's no leaks inside the cooler. Now we're gonna turn our pump on and we'll be able to see the blue. So with a cleaner that has color in it, we can see the color running through these jumpers. Now I like that particularly because I can see then when the color is in that final outline because I'm not gonna start our 20 minute timer until every line is blue. Because if I were to start it at the beginning and it took a full minute to get to the end of the line, well then one line gets a minute less. So just because it's a best practice and it's all about the cleanliness of the draft, I go ahead and wait until the entire system is filled with caustic and then we'll start at a 20 minute timer. Now then, we have caustic running through the entire system. Our flow rate is a little over a gallon a minute. It's not quite to two, which would be the best, but because it's a little bit below two, we're gonna run this caustic for a full 20 minutes. Now, while this is running, we're gonna go ahead and clean the tower and we're gonna clean the faucets. Now, remember again, if you'd like to see a more in-depth video on just cleaning the faucet, you can find that here. All right, and you can see the faucets have been resting or soaking in the caustic. So again, you always want to wear the protective gloves because this caustic is not good for human skin. So we'll continue wearing gloves, we'll continue wearing the eyewear, and we'll go ahead and give these a really good cleaning, which means rinsing them completely and then brush cleaning them as well. Again. All right, we've reached our 20 minute circulation with the caustic. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that intake, remember, back into uh, water and we're gonna flush water through the system just like we did the first time. All right, so we're back to doing a water flush and we can check our flow rate again just like we did last time. Now while we're, when we're flushing with water to get the caustic out, there isn't a prescribed amount of time this takes. You need to flush as long as it takes to bring your uh, beer lines back to a neutral pH. Now the way to do this is to first use pH paper Take a sample of your tap water and see that color on the pH strip or pH meter. It should be around seven, but you're taking that reference because if you happen to have a slightly acidic or slightly base water, then you know if you're getting back to where it should be. Now, I will typically flush for about 10 minutes and then check the time. Sometimes it'll need a little like, bit longer. Sometimes it'll need a little less and I will show you that as soon as it's ready here in a minute. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take the pH and see how we're doing on this flush. First, I'm gonna take a pH of the running water and this gives me a baseline. Now, of course, pH paper will have a scale with colors on it for you to read, but it can't hurt and it's always a good idea to take the pH of your tap water just to make sure that nothing unusual is going on. All right, so that's just a perfect seven. So now we're gonna take the pH from our running water here, or not the running water, this is the water coming out of the system. Pour it over that pH paper for a few moments. Take a look at the color in compared to the color chart. And we are back to neutral. So our water flush is complete. We can now shut down the pump and take the system back apart and put it back together. 
ready for use. All right, let's do that in there. Once this is taken apart, we're actually gonna clean the shanks and uh, from the inside, and I'll show you that in a moment. So once we're all set with that cleaning, what I like to do is I like to clean down these shanks because you can have bacterial buildup inside the shank coupling nuts. So what I do is I create a solution of a food grade acid-based cleaner. I use Star Sand. Most home brewers are very familiar with that pro product. Uh, I'm not endorsing it. It's what I use because I like it. Um, and it's food grade, so it's not harmful to people. So I just mix up a little bit and I clean down the entire faucet system. I go underneath and then I also get inside the shanks. Now that's a brush, but what you can also use is a small brush to get in there to all the threadings. And this is just a great way to make sure that these continue to spin appropriately and that you're not missing a bacterial point because the, the cleaner can't flow around the actual threadings. So once this is finished, we're gonna go ahead and put all the faucets back on, and then we're gonna put all the handles back on, and then we're gonna go and put everything back together in the cooler. So, Well, maybe two or three more points before I meet you in the cooler. Once you put the faucet back on and you've hand tightened it, you're gonna use your spanner wrench to tighten it back up. It only takes another quarter turn past your hand tight in order to make it tight enough if you continue to crank down on these too hard, one, they're hard to get back off, and two, you really start to damage that delicate little seal in the back. With all your markers back in place, now is a good time to feel the tension of the draw on your faucet. Because if it's too loose, then you need to tighten it up. And you can do that with the pliers and maybe a piece of plastic or paper over it so you don't chew it up. But now's the time to figure out whether or not you have the right tension before the kegs are re-tapped so that there's not beer flowing. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure all these have the right tension on them by tightening up that bottom bonnet and then we'll finish up in the cooler. Okay, we're back in the cooler and we're going to take all these couplers apart and put them back onto the kegs. Now, one of the things that you do every, thir or every two weeks along with this Costa cleaning is you brush clean these couplers so they don't have to come all the way off the system. Now one thing I like to do again is I, I use that same acid base cleaner again and that's how I brush these. And the reason I do that is because it helps uh, keep bacteria from growing back up. But by not coming in here and cleaning your couplers every single time you clean, you allow bacteria from all the little beer splashes to build up on your couplers. Now, considering the fact that we've just gone through all that work to clean this system, and we would put a coupler that was covered in bacteria back at what is proverbially the, uh, the dinner table, just seems crazy to me. So go ahead, use yourself a cleaner of some sort that's uh, food grade and not bad for people, and clean off your couplers and then attach them back up. This is also a good time to make sure all your connections are tight. So make sure your beer connection on top is tight. Make sure your air connection on the side is tight. Again, go ahead and take a look at the video about the coupler itself, and uh, that'll help you out a lot if you're not familiar with the coupler. So I'm gonna go ahead and couple all these back up, and then we're gonna gauge them uh, make sure all your gas is back on. Then we're going to go back out to the faucets and we're going to bleed beer back into the system or pack the lines with beer. We don't want to leave the system packed with uh, just water because when we turn the glycol back on, we don't want the water to freeze. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and we'll be back outside in a minute. Now I want to take a second and talk to you about beer jumpers uh, and the gas jumper. A lot of times you see these jumpers uh, that are very, very old, almost as old as the draft system itself. Now beer trunk line that runs up through the wall, that's meant to last 10 years, uh, maybe even a little bit more if it's taken care of well. However, these jumpers are flexible. And because they're flexible, they're more porous or they're flexible because they're porous. That porosity allows beer colors and flavors to get in and it also starts creating a stiffness in these lines. Well, that color and that, uh, those aromas start bleeding through. 
These are really meant to be changed best practice every 12 months. If you need to go a little bit longer, 18 months is probably about as far as you wanna go, but you also wanna take a look at how they look. Now there's a couple of pictures on our website of what jumpers look like at about 20 months that were very well cared for. And you can, so you can see what they look like. So it goes a long way to the flavor of your beer and how well your beer pours by changing these every year. Because one of the other things besides just color and flavor that it starts imparting is it also starts to create a turbulence with the beer. Now the other thing is your gas line. If your gas line is opaque, then you can't see if there's a bacterial problem growing in it. Because remember, we're sending caustic through the beer line, not the gas line. And if your little check valve or Thomas valve is missing from your coupler, again, refer back to the, the video on couplers, then uh, beer can get back up into the gas line. And as soon as that happens, bacteria starts growing. Now, bacteria does not grow only in an oxygen environment. There's also anaerobic bacteria, and which means it will grow whether this is a nitrogen, oxygen, or carbon dioxide environment. So you really want to use a gas line that is translucent, that you can see through. I don't know if you can see this in the video, but this red gas line, I can see through this so I can see if there's a problem. Now, if you've had clear opaque lines on for 10 years, I would highly recommend you change them out so you can watch. Usually you just change them out right with your beer line and you will have pristine beer or at least one step closer to pristine beer. So we're all set in the cooler, all the gas is back on, and we're gonna go out and we're going to fill the system back up with beer and then turn on our glycol and we'll be set this morning. Now everything is re-engaged in the cooler and set. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna run the gas or the water through until we get to beer and we're gonna also run out a little bit of that beer. And the reason we're gonna do that is because one, we wanna make sure that the line's filled back up with beer so that the bar is ready to go. But also, we wanna check the flow rates and make things sure everything is right there. But once we turn the glycol back on, then we're gonna have that freezing glycol going through the system. And we wanna make sure that there's no water in there that's going to freeze. So we go ahead and bleed all these out. And then we clean up the area, mop the cooler. Remember, cleanliness uh, is next to godliness, as they say and uh, then we're gonna be all set. So thanks for joining us here at the Open Bottle today where we did a circulation cleaning. I hope you found this video useful in some way. If you did, please like it. Uh, you're welcome to subscribe to our channel or leave us a comment below. We welcome input. And uh, at Leaders Beverage, our passion is your next drink.